It's Ranger Olivia here, and welcome to the Parklands Virtual Classroom. Today we're going to talk about crayfish. Crayfish are common creatures found in our creeks at the Parklands. They go by many different names, like crawfish, crawdad, freshwater lobster, mudbugs, or yabbies. But no matter what you call them, they are defined by special structures and adaptations. Crayfish are crustaceans, which means they belong to a large group of animals that share similar characteristics, kind of like a family. Other crustaceans include crabs, lobsters, shrimp, and pill bugs. That's right. Although roly-polies live on land and look like bugs, they're actually crustaceans, which means they're more closely related to crabs and lobsters than worms and beetles. All crustaceans have a hard outer shell called an exoskeleton, which protects the softer parts of the body. The exoskeleton does not grow with the crayfish. Instead, the crayfish will shed its exoskeleton and grow a new one. This is a process called molting, and they are very vulnerable at this time. Sometimes you can find their sheds in the water. Crayfish have strong pincers, which help ward off predators and tear food into smaller bites to eat. It is not uncommon to find a crayfish with only one pincer. When crayfish lose legs or pincers, they can grow them back in the next molting cycle. Underneath their pincers are four sets of legs. These are called their walking legs, which they use to navigate around rocks and other obstacles on creek beds or on land. They also have a smaller set of legs on their tails called swimmerettes. These help them swim and hold young. Lastly, they have adapted eyes on short stems that can move around, allowing them to see in all different directions. They also have antennae that help them detect movement and chemical signals in the water. Most crayfish live underwater, but some choose to live on land. These crayfish burrow underground until they hit mud. They leave behind these familiar structures called crayfish chimneys, commonly seen on the banks of creeks and lakes. Having such a diverse range of habitat means that crayfish have adapted a special way of breathing on land and in water. Crayfish have gills that are located on the sides and base of their legs. Gills are what almost all creatures that live in water use to breathe. Gills are special organs that can pull in dissolved oxygen in the water to allow creatures to breathe. However, the gills on a crayfish are more sensitive than most. The gills can also pull in moisture in the air, allowing them to survive on land as well. Not all gills are like this. If you've ever observed a fish out of water, you know they have a hard time breathing within seconds of being out of the water. Crayfish, however, can last for days on land if the conditions are right. And as for the crayfish that burrow, they have found an ingenious way of pulling oxygen out of the mud to help them survive. Crayfish are omnivores, which means they will eat just about anything they can get their pincers on. They largely feed on snails, insect larvae, small fish, and dead stuff that collects on the bottom of the creek. They are also nocturnal, meaning they are most active at night. They rest under rocks and leaf debris during the day. Now that you know more about crayfish, let's go on a crayfish hunt. Find a freshwater stream near you, or come out to the parklands and explore one of our many gravel bars that give you direct access to Floyd's Fork Creek. Look under rocks and leaf debris, which is where they sleep during the day. It is helpful, but not necessary, to bring along a net. These critters can be fast and elusive, so be patient and it will pay off. They actually swim backwards as they push off with their fan-like tails to get through the water. It's best to sneak up and put your net behind them so they will swim into your net. Those are all the tricks this ranger knows, but I'm sure you will learn more as you go. Remember to be aware of their pincers. They can be very strong and they might hurt you. If you want to pick one up, do so by picking them up by their backs, seen here. That way they can't reach your fingers. And remember to always return everything you find back to nature when you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more help on the subject, fill out the Google Slides on crayfish. And for more topics, go to the Parklands Virtual Classroom at theparklands.org. Thanks for watching.